Orc was released in 1991. It was developed by WJS Design for the publisher Psygnosis. As was typical for Psygnosis at the time, they used this awesome uh, fantasy artwork for the cover. And it was designed by Richard Clifton Day. This same artwork was actually used in 1979 for a Blue Oyster Cult album cover. And the album was called Cultosaurus Erectus. So I'll show you a few photos of the box artwork. So here you can see the main box taken out of the sleeve. It's got that fantastic Psychnosis artwork on the black box. I was so impressed by that as a kid. And here it is with the contents um, and the our logo on the back of the inside of the box. They were really uh, just a really slick design. You can see that card to the bottom right there that says hints and tips. It says you can buy the solution from your local retailer if you're having trouble with the game. When I bought this game on eBay recently, the solution came in the box luckily. I've seen the just the solution book on sale for about 50 bucks. Luckily I got it with the rest of the contents. I had trouble finishing this game as a kid and even as an adult trying it again I found this solution book to be essential just for, for one reason, for one section which I'll show you in this video. It was a game that required half a megabyte of RAM so I could happily play this without having to upgrade to a full megabyte which I had to do later for some other games. And here's the price tag, basically 26 pounds. I ordered this from the UK so um, that's about that's roughly what, what I paid for it, or my parents paid for it many years ago. I think it was about 80 bucks or 100 bucks or something. Here's the back of the box with some generic kind of marketing stuff and some boasting about its three layer parallax scrolling, arcade speed action and powerful FX. The screenshots look pretty nice too. The storyline is that you're a member of this alien race who has a very difficult training program to become a captain captain of a ship or something and you've got to do this test and the entire game is actually uh, a test which is kind of interesting you're not really you're not even fighting the bad guys or anything like that you're just trying to get through an exam the equivalent of an exam all right let's jump into the game then Lovely little animation there, Psychnosis animation. So classy. WJS design. I love that font. So, here's the prompt to insert the second disc. I'm running this on an emulator. So I have to click a couple of buttons to insert the sort of virtual disc and you had to enter a code from the manual but this this uh, emulated version is cracked so we just have to enter 111 so if you've got the real version of the game you, you really need a, a manual for the copy protection Thought I'd let the music play there for you. Kind of starts off a little depressing and then kicks into this uh, action movie style soundtrack. The actual game doesn't have any music in it though. It's this sort of constant droning in the background. So when we start, there's a computer. This You can access these computers all, over, all through the game. It's mostly useless if you know what you're doing. I'll just be playing the first I'll just be playing the first two levels. You've got limited ammo and you start with uh, zero fuel. You have to find fuel as you go. 
You can see things touch you and cause damage. It doesn't knock you back or... A lot of games when you first get hit, you have a few seconds where you can't get hurt any further. This just keep, continues to hurt you. You just consistently lose, lose life. I really love the artwork in this, all the way through the game, from, from the cover to the to the in-game artwork, the backgrounds. You can see that bridge in the background on that sort of purple and reddish gradient. The bosses like this are pretty shit. They're not very smart. <laughs> they just have these repetitive patterns. The difficulty is more, really more about the the maze that the game is and, and solving puzzles. So just there I put down a key. I put I used a key to open the gate. I had to press spacebar to get my menu up. A lot of people when they see the Amiga, the, the joysticks that you use to play Amiga games, they only have one button so people assume well they must be really simple games or that's, that's just crap, there's not enough buttons on it. Even a NES had more buttons than that on, on its controller. The thing is, you actually have a... Uh, here I am paying the toll to finish this puzzle. Spacebar again and then use the, use the one button to put it down. You would play Amiga games with uh, a joystick sitting in, right in front of your monitor in front of your keyboard. So it's not really that you have a, a, sing, a joystick with a single button, you've got a joystick with a button and a keyboard. And so a lot of uh, Amiga games, and a lot of games at the time, um, you'd use them in, con in conjunction, so you'd use them together. And, th and that gave you a lot of options. It was a, it's a problem with games like fighting games and some others, but for most games it was pretty good. Main problem with platformers on the Amiga is that, including this one, for me uh, these days after getting used to jumping with a button, you actually have to push up to jump and it feels kind of awkward. You get I got used to it again, playing this, and I'm playing it with Amiga Forever, and it, I haven't been able to find an option to change change the button options. Um, I would have liked to have added a jump button to the joystick, assigned it to up. But anyway, so what I grabbed down there was a scanner. It lets, it lets you look around your area, immediate immediate area. <clears throat> and all the, most of this stuff you have to figure out by yourself. There's a lot of trial and error. It'll take you... It's kind of designed... These kind of games are designed to take you a long time to get past a really small part. So you have to search every corner. Do, you know, sometimes pixel-perfect uh, jumping and platforming. And you and you when you die you just have to start again. There is a save feature in this game though, you can save it onto a, onto the floppy disk. <coughs> and gathering fuel, gathering items. A lot of the foreground objects and and everything are quite bland. Well, they're, they're all a similar color, but I actually like how uh, being forced to use a limited palette, I like how it made it look. There we go, first death, fucked up. The continue screen. I do really like the pixel art. They've probably drawn the whole thing in deluxe paint with a mouse. A strange choice they made though was to put so many different colours in that gradient in the background. These games only really had 16 or 32 colours usually. So you had to be really sparing and careful with uh, how you use them. Those extra greens and, and things in, in the background could have been used to help distinguish other items in the foreground from each other like enemies and objects. But again I have to say I like the style, I, I like how it turned out. Love a lot, of, a lot of the smaller details, little cracks in the ground and where stones are, the kind of guts and eyeballs and claws and things coming out of the monsters. Those crazy alien, organic looking 
buildings or structures, whatever the hell they are in the background. There's obviously a lot of influence from fantasy art of the time, the 70s and 80s. So here we go, I'm checking out the computer. Just showing you the scanner, how it works. You can see the area around you in case you, you know, you want to look around, find clues, U-R-E, U-R-E-R. That little friggin' set of numbers there, it looks like a maths equation, is you need to f solve that to figure out the password to, to get through the end of the level. There's another little clue in the manual. I couldn't figure it out as a kid and I couldn't be bothered trying to figure it out as an adult, so I, I had to look it up to get to the, to the next level. Just so unforgiving. You would never see a game like this now. I just skipped through a bit of the puzzle solving stuff and platforming to the end of the level. He's the final boss at the end of the level. Not a very intelligent boss. When I was a kid, this is the last thing I ever saw in the game because I could not figure it out and I could not get past it. And I bet there were many other kids or well, even many other adults who could not figure it out. It's really the low part of low point of the game, I think. I had to quickly look it up so it was taking me some time. Psygnosis used to like putting little references to their older games in in following games so there's actually a level in in orc where these little lemmings are spawning out of an object and they walk uh, a few blocks and then fall off the edge of this cliff and die it's pretty cool so see that little bird in the cage to the left that little creature in the in the cage you can shoot that and destroy it. If you do that, you can't finish the level. So you might walk along and think, oh, since I can shoot it and blow it up, that must be what I'm, what I'm supposed to do. But you're actually uh, meant to go up and, uh, I forget what it is, you bring something back down and it makes the bird fly. Oh, you, yeah, you get a key, open it, the bird flies out and brings back a crystal for you. If you don't do that, you can't go any further. It's these kind of... You know, it's from that time, these, these unforgiving puzzles. Where you'd, you'd buy a one game and it'd, and it'd have to last you a long time because it was expensive. And you wanted to get your money's worth. No one wanted to pay 100, 100 bucks, 120 bucks for a game and finish it in a weekend. It was expected that it was going to be challenging and difficult and last a long time. So here I'm just going to demonstrate the death screen, death animation. So simply because you failed the test, they're going to eject you into space to depressing music. So I think in conclusion, it's it's a great, it's a really good game, very collectible I think, I love the box artwork, game looks beautiful in my opinion, um, though you know, sometimes a bit bland, but um, artistically quite nice. And I do recommend it, especially if you're into psychosis games.